Thank you very much, Speaker uh, Viverito. Uh, boy, this is almost like a classroom. It's so quiet in here today. Uh, it's great to be here, and for me, this is a day of uh, personal significance in the sense that uh, having, uh, having been a New York City public school teacher, a UFT chapter leader for 25 years, and to now sit as the chair of the Education Committee uh, is very personally important to me. And I want to thank Speaker Viverito for giving me that opportunity. And I also want to state how wonderful it is to have a chancellor under whom I worked at one time uh, as an educator, and uh, also want to say welcome to you for being with us today. Thank you very, very much. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Councilmember Danny Drum, and I'm the chair of the Education Committee, if I didn't tell you that before. First, I'd like to thank Speaker Mark Viverito for sponsoring this resolution and for her leadership on this very important issue. Uh, thank you to my co-chair, Councilmember Lori Combo, the new chair of the Women's Issues Committee, and thank you to all of you for coming out to participate today. Today's hearing on resolution number two, which is a resolution that supports the city's plan to establish high-quality universal pre-kindergarten for all eligible four-year-olds and a high-quality after-school program for middle school-aged youth is a very important step towards improving the lives of children in this city. As many of you know, I was an educator for 25 years. Additionally, I was the director of a daycare center. I've been in the front lines and have seen firsthand the tangible proof that quality early childhood education enhances the life of a child. In addition, the benefits of early childhood education have been established repeatedly through research. It has shown how these crucial years in a child's development can set the tone for a child's future successes. For example, research conducted through a partnership of New York University and the Children's Museum of Manhattan concluded that the preschool years are critical not only for developing basic skills for school readiness, but also for the development of children's interests and beliefs about their own capabilities. And such benefits don't stop at its early success. Some longitudinal studies have shown that early success can last well into adulthood and that such results in long-term gains are particularly important for disadvantaged students. One particular study pointed to participants having a higher medium income at age 40. So you see the success can be built upon and compounded like interest. Unfortunately, high quality full day early childhood education is frequently out of reach for many because it is often hard to find and it is exorbitant in cost. While the city does already offer UPK, it is often unavailable for full day and sometimes overcrowded. I believe that expanding full-time quality universal pre-kindergarten for all four-year-olds four is something we can all agree on for its benefits are undeniable. While most of the attention has been on UPK, resolution number two also supports the city's plan for high-quality after-school programs for middle-aged students. As we know, middle age and middle school life can be tough. Middle school students are not quite kids, and yet they're not quite yet young adults. And they are often too old for some programs and yet too young for others. It's an age where guidance is sorely needed. Unfortunately, over the past several years, New York City after school programs have been dramatically cut. The mayor's plan seeks to expand after-school programs in order to help students make positive gains in their academic performance, improve communication skills, decrease behavioral problems, and it offers alternatives to quote-unquote hanging out. These programs are essential for moving the city forward. An overwhelming amount of New Yorkers agree with its intent. The governor of New York agrees with the imperative but has offered a short-term solution. The city plans to address these vital issues by minimally increasing taxes on those making over $500,000 a year, which would ensure the funding would continue to be available to sustain universal pre-K and after-school programs long term. Resolution number two fully supports this plan. I want to thank everyone again for coming, and I will now turn it over to my co-chair, Councilmember Lori Kumbo, who will say a few words. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am very excited to introduce myself to you. I am Council Member Lori Cumbo, and I am thrilled and honored to be the chair of the Women's Issues Committee at this incredible time in history.
I have declared 2014 the year of the woman, not just because it sounds good, but because this is the year that we are going to make incredible strides to close the economic gap for women and to bring forth unprecedented le legislation that will bring about the level of equality that women deserve. First, I'd like to thank my co-chair, Councilmember Danny Drum, and members of the Education Committee, many of whom began their professionals' careers as teachers, principals, and educators, and I'd like to acknowledge them, Councilmembers Barron, Rodriguez, Levine, Drum, Traeger, Cabrera, and even my very own science teacher from IS-11, uh, Mr. Maisel. So, it shows what a great quality collaborators we have here today. And these are members that have given their lives to education, and I'm so very proud to work with each and every one of them. I also want to thank Council Member Ben Kalos, who is the only member, male member, of the Women's Issues Committee. Right? <laughs> Special recognition to him. And it was to this joint hearing. And I think that that is so profound because he shares my theology issue, our women's issues, and you'll be seeing many more joint hearings because we are going to have a very powerful voice in moving this city forward. And of course, a year of the woman would not be complete without having our speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito, for sponsoring this resolution, as well as for her leadership on this issue and for recognizing that every issue is a women's issue. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilmember Kalos, followed by Councilmember King. Uh, thank you, Chairs Drum and uh, Cumbo, and especially my chair, the Women's Issues Committee Chair uh, Cumbo, because without her, all the members of the Women's Issues Committee would not be here. I also want to make sure I acknowledge a, a special person in the audience, Raglan George, the Executive Director of DC 1707. He's been doing the uh, one-man march during the previous administration, making sure that this issue remained in the forefront and he brought me to this issue early on and I just want to thank him and his brothers and sisters at DC 1707 for all of your amazing hard work. I want to thank the uh, Chancellor and the Deputy Mayor for uh, coming before us. I, I know this is new and we appreciate it. I'm a public school graduate. I uh, spent a lot of time in after schools uh, every day if possible and that's what kept me out of enough trouble to get to sit here. So uh, I think it's really, really important and as a member of the Women's Issues Committee and as a child of a single parent, a single mother, uh, how many single mothers can we expect to see rejoining the workforce in the same numbers as we see in cities that have been offering this program? I can give you a number, but I will tell you that that is one of my hopes. Um, as a superintendent, and actually with the support of Letitia James, who was the city council person at the time I was a superintendent, one of the programs that we did put in place for after school was exclusively for single mothers. And also starting something such as movie night, where parents could come and just talk to each other in one room and we'd babysit for the kids in another room. I think it is one of the issues, certainly that I hope the Women's Issue Group takes on, that we need to be more supportive of different family styles. And to the degree that we can do that so that people also have a break, I, I always tell the story that as a grandmother, my daughter has herself, her husband, her babysitter, her grandfather, her grandmother, all helping. But many of our single parents have no one. So the fact that they don't get a break or relief to talk to other adults, so how do we structure schools and other places for that to take place, I think is very important, and certainly some of the issues that you guys should be talking about in your group. Look forward to working with you. Thank you.